All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Phantom Weather Channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what's next for Tropical Storm Elsa, which is moving towards the east coast of the United States and is expected to make impacts to areas like New York City in the coming days. We're going to be talking about what the impacts are going to be associated with Elsa, also what the intensity and track of the storm would be, and also what time you can expect these impacts in your area. Before we hop into the video, though, I want to ask that you guys do subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel if you guys want to get weather-related videos and severe weather live streams. Also, be sure to drop a like on the video and share this video out on social media if you guys would like other people to see this video as well. Let's hop right into here. We're taking a look at our current National Weather Service hazards, which as you can see in these dark brown red shades here uh, that expand all the way up through South Carolina into eastern Massachusetts, including portions of Long Island. Uh, this is where we have some tropical storm warnings in effect here. Uh, so we expect some very strong winds from Elsa uh, in the coming days here. And these green shades that expand all the way uh, from North Carolina into uh, portions of Maine here. This is where we have some flood slash flash flood watches that are in effect. We do expect some flash flooding, some of which could potentially be significant uh, for areas like New York City expanding into some of the East Coast areas from Boston into uh, Maine here. We also have some tornado watches that are in effect in the Carolinas as the conditions remain favorable for some tornadic activity to occur uh, with Elsa, and they will, are expected to remain that way throughout the next couple of days here. Take a look at what Elsa currently looks like. You can see it is a pretty organized structure here situated over the Carolinas at this point. Again, this is expected to move northeastward eventually. And take a look at where, what the uh, track guide of the storm currently is based on our global and hurricane spaghetti models here. You can see again it is situated over eastern Georgia or western South Carolina right now. This one is expected to move northeastward and pretty much all of our models are in very very good agreement with where this one is going to track here. They expect this one to move throughout central North Carolina, southeastern Virginia, eventually gradually further off the east coast uh, through Long Island and then eventually by the time they get to about eastern Maine here they expect us to depart into uh, Nova Scotia and then eventually through Newfoundland. That's where the track gets a little bit uh, confusing from there. Uh, but overall, the uh, models are pretty consistent with where they expect Elsa to track from this point on. And take a look at our model intensity guidance for Elsa, what's left of it here. Uh, you can see by, by, by the time that the uh, week's up here, all the models have shown this one, uh, shown this storm ending here. Most of our models, though, are showing this becoming a tropical depression uh, by about the next uh, five days or so here. Uh, we do have a handful of models, though, that are showing this one remaining a tropical storm beyond that period. Most of them, though, are showing this one uh, weakening down into a tropical depression within the next three days or so. Uh, right now, it is currently a, a weak tropical storm at this point. And what we've already seen from the storm system here, you can see that in these brown chases where we have some hurricane force uh, winds that have already been observed here. We saw a larger swath of it here in the Caribbean, extending all the way from the uh, eastern Caribbean islands uh, down into uh, south of Haiti and south of the Dominican Republic here. We saw another area off the west coast of Florida where we saw some hurricane force winds that were observed. In these orange shades, we have seen some tropical storm force winds that are observed. So hurricane force winds are winds sustained of over 74 miles an hour, and uh, tropical storm force winds are sustained over um, 39 miles an hour and take a look at what we expect from uh, the remainder of the storm system here here we are probably seeing tropical storm force winds within the next five days here uh, which in these purple shades we've already seen it observed but in these purple shades we expect a 90 to 100 percent chance here of seeing tropical storm force winds again this is kind of already moved out of southeastern georgia at this point here so what's left with the storm uh, in these yellow shades these light yellow shades uh, we're looking at a 30 to 40 percent chance of seeing some tropical storm force winds, which even though that isn't a significant chance, it is enough. Um, so we do see a pretty solid chance there. And that extends th throughout most of the Carolinas here into southeastern Virginia and potentially portions of far southeastern uh, Maryland as well here or uh, Delaware, we could be looking at some tropical storm force winds, but there's at least a chance of that happening uh, in, throughout these green shades as well, where we have about a 5 to 20% chance here of seeing some tropical storm force winds. For areas like New York City, we see about a 10 to 20% chance of that happening. A uh, 10 to 20% chance you're seeing some tropical storm force winds, which again is greater than 40 miles an hour, uh, sustained within a one-minute average here. So that is uh, strong winds here, or at least uh, occurring throughout a one-minute average. Uh, so we do expect some pretty uh, significant winds to occur with the storm system here. And take a look at our possibilities here of seeing some 50 knot winds here, which is equivalent to 58 miles an hour, which is what the National Weather Service defines as a severe thunderstorm. Um, so this is capable of producing damage to roof, siding, and trees. And again, this is throughout a one-minute average here, so this isn't necessarily the winds that will be sustained. 
or the winds that will be gusting but over a uh, period of a minute uh, the winds could be over 60 miles an hour and there is at least a chance of that happening here throughout these dark green shades here that extends throughout eastern Connecticut into eastern Massachusetts and then another area up there uh, in portions of eastern Nova Scotia and uh, western Newfoundland Canada there's about a 5 to 10 percent chance of that happening and then throughout portions of far east coastal Maine uh, or sorry, Massachusetts, and then portions of the waters here between Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, Canada, there's a 10 to 20% chance of that happening. So the winds could be very strong throughout those regions there, and there's a higher chance of that occurring. Take a look at our potential for seeing some flash flooding. Here will be our flash flood outlook for today and tonight here, which there is that risk there down in Texas of seeing some flash flooding. Uh, but as far as associated with Elsa, you can see that uh, throughout portions of New York City, uh, northern New Jersey, southern New York, and southwestern Connecticut here, we have a moderate risk here of seeing some excessive rain Fall, which is a 20 to 50 percent chance of seeing excessive rainfall exceed flash flood guidance within 25 miles of a given location this is going to be a pretty significant risk one reason is likely because these are urban areas that this uh, heavy rainfall is expected to occur in but widespread flash flooding throughout the slight risk can be expected all the way throughout eastern south carolina into uh, vermont and new hampshire today and in this uh, green shade we could be looking at some isolated flash flooding as well our excessive rainfall outlook for tomorrow here you can see a widespread moderate risk of excessive rainfall for elsa that expects Expands throughout Connecticut into eastern Maine here throughout central Massachusetts and southeastern New Hampshire as well here where some widespread flash flooding could be possible. It could potentially be significant. Breaking down the rainfall that we expect over the course of the next three days, I believe this just got updated. We actually had an area here uh, that you can see in the thumbnail uh, throughout portions of New York City region uh, that could likely be seeing over four inches of rainfall that will fall throughout the course of the next three days here. But in these red shades, we could at least be looking at over two inches of rainfall, many areas over three inches of rainfall. In these pinks here, we could be looking at over an inch of rainfall. Uh, in these blues, we could at least be looking at over a half inch. So widespread heavy rainfall could be a concern throughout uh, southeastern Georgia into Maine, or really for all of the northeastern United States throughout the course of the next few days. And here would be our tornado outlook for today and tonight, which as you can see, we currently have a 5% chance of a tornado touchdown within 25 miles of a given location here uh, for today and tonight throughout portions of northeastern South Carolina and eastern North Carolina. We also have a, uh, this will come associated with Tropical Storm Elsa. We also have a widespread area here in this green shade where there could at least be the potential of a tornado or two touching down here throughout uh, the Carolinas extending all the way into southern uh, New York and portions of southwestern Massachusetts as well here. We also have an ongoing chance of tornadoes from Elsa tomorrow and tomorrow night as well here. In this green shade, we have a marginal risk of severe weather. And this will come associated with a 2% chance of a tornado touchdown within 25 miles of a given location throughout portions of eastern Long Island. A uh, large majority of Connecticut, portions of um, Rhode Island, and then also portions of eastern Massachusetts and far southeastern New Hampshire as well. There's a chance of maybe seeing an isolated tornado or two touching down from Elsa tomorrow and tomorrow night. And here's what we expect from the storm to track here, uh, ac according to our European model, throughout the course uh, every six hours. This is going to track up through North Carolina here, eventually to Virginia by the time that we get to uh, about this, this uh, evening here. This will gradually move up. By the time it crosses the Chesapeake Bay here, this will become a 999 uh, millibar low pressure center centered over southern Maryland at this point here uh, with some very strong winds associated with it. Uh, typically, the uh, more confined you see these black lines together here to the uh, low pressure center, the gustier the winds are going to be. Again, there's a chance of seeing some very strong winds with this. Eventually, the main part of the storm system here will reach New York City by the time that we get to about tomorrow morning here by about 6 a.m. tomorrow morning or 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. This will gradually move northeast of uh, still remaining a strong low pressure system about a 998 low hugging the coast of Maine uh, by the time that we get through Friday and eventually into Saturday. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel. Also be sure to drop a like on the video and share this video out on social media if you guys like other people to see this video as well. But until the next video, stay safe and we'll talk to you guys back here next time.